Hi there, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. And today we've got Teledyne Fleur returning to us and Jason Cargill again. Hi Jason, how are you doing? I'm very good, thanks. It's good to be back. So Jason, last time we spoke, we were talking about thermal imaging. Uh, today we're going to talk about acoustic imaging. So I think on the, the previous um, Ask the Expert, you mentioned how with thermal imaging, it kind of um, represents a, a picture of the environment that you're you're measuring. Yeah. Could you just tell me about what is acoustic imaging and maybe in relation to thermal imaging? Is it the same kind of setup? Yeah, well, acoustic imaging is a, is a new um, direction that we at Teledyne Flare have gone in uh, over the last um, two or three years now. Uh, acoustic imaging differs from a thermal imager in the fact that a thermal imager relies upon a infrared detector, uh, which is housed within the camera. The acoustic imager actually uses a set of microphones which are, which are mounted within the acoustic imaging camera. So whereas we can see infrared energy with a thermal camera, what we can see with an acoustic imager is sound. Um, right. which, again, is another fantastic tool to have in the arsenal. Um, but it actually uses microphones to listen. It listens for sound, um, and then it actually makes it as a visual image on the, the back of the camera. So, okay. in principle, gotcha. you've got a, a single-handed device, which when you point it at a particular environment, rather than show infrared energy, this one will show where there's sound uh, waves being created by a potential leak in a compressed air system, for example, or it could be a partial discharge sound pattern um, when used on um, a different uh, function within the, the camera. Yeah. I was just going to come, come on to the, the applications and the areas where you would use these. So you mentioned air leaks, uh, discharge. Are there any other environments where you've seen uh, acoustic images actually used then? To be quite honest, that not within the, fil the, the fields that we operate within. Um, you know, we've designed or we have products within the, in the portfolio which are specific to those applications. So, for example, leak detection within the Teledyne Flare unit, which is called the SI124, it actually will monetize and quantify the cost of the compressed air loss over a period of a year. So to be able to do that, it, it relies on uh, AI functionality within the camera. Um, okay. And it will actually use the sound pattern and it will use the decibel levels to come up with the, uh, for example, liters per minute loss. And then it will extrapolate that out over a year to say over a year, this potential leak will cost you X amount of pounds. Um, and it then allows the, the user or the company to uh, carry out the correct um, remedial procedures to ensure that that leak is, is stopped. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good example there in terms of the use, because a lot of people in, in terms of energy costs at the moment and sustainability and the cost of energy, they want to conserve as, as much energy as possible now I think if I remember correctly, um, in certain, you know, compressed air systems, it's not unusual to lose 20% of your air generated through, through leaks. So being able to monetize that definitely gives the, uh, the facilities manager all of that information. You know, again, we talked about um, condition monitoring when we were talking about thermal, and it sounds exactly the same for, for acoustic imaging. I just want to talk about the, the industrial environment. It is a noisy environment. So yeah. in terms of sound and using microphone to to get to sound, how how do you filter out the normal industrial noise against maybe something that you have, maybe like an air leak, for example? The, the sound frequencies and the sound levels are, are critically important for any acoustic imaging camera, especially when we start looking at distance as well, um, because th th there's a phenomenon called the inverse square law, which essentially... Every time you double in distance away from a potential source of a sound, the decibel levels drop, and they can drop quite dramatically the further you go away. And that, that, that distance could be from a metre to five metres. So therefore, having a camera which, A, can cover um, a wide range of frequencies, but also, as you've mentioned about filtering out, it allows you to change the frequencies within the camera to filter out maybe some of that um, white noise, if you like, that you're not particularly interested in. Yeah. Like anything else, a bit like thermal imaging, with an acoustic imaging camera, what you're trying to do, what the camera will actually do is it will put a crosshair on the worst leak it sees within the field of view. So you know okay. that it, it can show multiple leaks, but the worst leak at the time, the highest sound um, decibel generated within that field of view, will have a crosshair placed on it, 
And what that allows you to do is to not only see how many litres per minute from that particular leak and what the potential cost is, but it also enables you to get those most critical problems fixed first. Because with the best will in the world, um, compressed air leaks are just a, they're a daily occurrence within any industrial environment. You know, I worked in an industrial environment for many years, saving my apprenticeship and afterwards. And, you know, used to walk in in the morning and the, the whole place was hissing, essentially, because that's the way people kind of operated, where maybe the energy yeah. costs weren't as critical as they are now. So certainly having a, a simple piece of technology, which will allow you to monetize a loss and then not only quantify what the cost of it is, and then the return on the investment within that piece of equipment as well. I think that's that's a really key um topic for people when they're considering you know acoustic imaging is that return on investment because you know yeah energy costs we know are rocketing yeah and and to bring that back into a saving for your actual uh, facility in your your plant for example is is ideal but i think there was one other thing that you mentioned earlier um similar to when we were talking about thermal imaging you know this is a single hand use so it's very practical yeah and you can get into areas and measure things which you know previously would be be inaccessible or maybe dangerous to to get too close to so do you see that as one of the benefits of, of using these as well i think definitely i mean you know partial discharge for example most partial discharge is quite a distant phenomenon because if we're looking at for example there could be pylons we could be looking at a substation where the, the area is fenced off um, where you actually can't actually get access to and you know you know what we're not trying to do we're not trying to replace the traditional ultrasonic detection methods you know there are some fantastic products out there um, but that does, they're more involved in regards to the learning of them and the understanding of how to use them. The beauty of the SI124 is it's a simple product to use. The idea being, just like thermal imaging, we want this technology in as many people's hands as possible, even people who aren't vastly experienced with ultrasonic uh, testing and, and detecting, because the camera itself, with its artificial intelligence, which is built in, can actually tell you what the problem is. I mean, partial discharge, for example, you know, it's a phenomenon which is generally caused by a breakdown in insulation, and it's therefore yeah. it's electricity which is escaping, which again is like lost compressed air, lost electricity as a cost, and it's potentially a, a dangerous um, situation as well. And the SI124 will actually, it has an artificial intelligence technology which gives you a severity assessment based on the sound pattern. And it will therefore tell you potentially what type of partial discharge you may be suffering with. It could be, for example, corona. And corona is the situation where the insulator breaks down, the air around that point starts to charge and becomes electrified, essentially. It could mm -hmm. be tracking across the surface of the particular uh, surface. But the camera will give you, based on the details it sees, what that potential problem is. And also it gives a recommendation of how to potentially repair that particular problem as well so it's 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 very clever technology yeah so you said at the beginning obviously you know you, you have like a, an acoustic sensor in there uh, or uh, so it's actually a, a mems microphone but with the si124 can you just tell me a little bit how many is it 124 sensors in there that you have yeah yeah essentially what we have the, right. the name it, it literally says on the label what it, on the t it says on the tin what it does there's 124 MEMS microphones mounted within the camera. The idea being of which the more microphones you have, the better the device performs. Um, it allows you to see maybe some of those smaller spikes that you'll miss with less microphones. Essentially, if I was to compare it to a thermal imaging camera, the thermal resolution or the infrared resolution of the camera that you use, the higher the resolution, the more detail that you're going to see. The higher the microphone count, it allows you to pick up maybe smaller um, sound anomalies within the situation that you're looking at. So the number of microphones is, is definitely an, an important thing to think about when considering yeah. um, investing in an acoustic imaging camera. So it, it kind of increases the sensitivity and gives you much more of a detail of what's happening, for example. Yeah, it's kind of what it does. It triangulates where the problem is coming from. So the sound source, the more microphones you have, it allows you to triangulate where the location is. So it also allows you essentially to, to, to be more um, accurate with your location uh, in regards to finding where that potential problem is. Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier about, you know, the, the flexibility of, um, you know, 
the one-handed operation and yeah. getting into accessible places. But how much does distance from the object play a part? Is there anything you can tell me about that? Yeah, the, the distance is really critical because sound waves perform differently over over distance, depending on the level of the sound wave. Um, what you tend to find is if the sound waves the sound wave is a higher frequency, it actually drops off pretty dramatically. So you know there are okay. most industrial. And again, I say most, it's a very broad description, but most industrial kind of sound uh, levels which we have are in kind of the 30 to 40 um, hertz in within frequencies. So from when we're looking at a problem, it's being able to denominate between those uh, frequencies over the distances. So lower frequencies travel further. So if you have a camera which can do up to 100 kilohertz, for example, it really becomes really important to be very, very close uh, to the actual source of the sound. I mean, the SI-124 operates up to 65 kilohertz. As I say, most industrial uh, sounds which you're going to receive in are going to be more around the 30 to 40 kilohertz range. Um, so from our perspective, is it's uh, a very broad potential um, source of sound patterns that you can detect. Yeah. So as you were talking about the the SI one one two four there, you you were talking about a lot of the the AI that you use, a lot of the functionality, yeah. um, cost analysis, etc. ROI. Yeah. What other tools and resources do do you guys actually offer the the user in addition to just the um, that the the instrument, for example? I, th- I think just 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 on the instruments. I mean, obviously the SI one two four is is a, is a device. It's a, it's a single handed device, pistol grip design. But it comes in a, in a hard carry case. It's supplied with two cordless um, batteries, which are field replaceable. Um, so, again, practically, it's a, a really easy to access, easy to use product. comes with a strap so that you can carry it around sites with you as well. But really, when it comes to the uh, the data, the information, it, it, there's two options with, um, with the SI124. There's an online uh, viewer, an SI124 viewer, which allows you to upload images uh, directly to a, a secure cloud account, which can then be viewed and analysed uh, later on. Uh, but also within Teledyne Flare now, we've incorporated the plugin for our Thermal Studio software. So whereas the Thermal Studio software has historically worked uh, with the thermal imaging cameras, you can now do combined reports or single acoustic reports using thermal imaging software provided by Teledyne Flare. So what we've done is we've enhanced the ability to analyze and report because ultimately, really, it's the reporting data which can, again, make a case for whether it's remedial work or whether it's cost reductions. Because one of the big things which has occurred now is that um, many uh, industrial users who've been on a particular uh, kilowatt hour cost, for example, um, those deals, and this, these, this has come from you know companies that I've spoken to, those deals are either coming to an end or have come to an end. And the costs of compressed air, for example, and what it can potentially cost in losses um, has really focused people's minds in regards to what's available. And kind of having to bring in an expert who can do a, a full ultrasonic survey, all that's still available. But the SI124 really brings a product into people's hands where you can very, very quickly, and I can attest to this from personal experience you can find very quickly faults which you would never be able to do without such types of technology quickly yeah yeah absolutely um jason um i really thank you again for your time joining us on design spark again You're um we found out so much more about um acoustic imaging uh, today so I hope we can have you on again maybe for a third time on design spark that'd be wonderful and uh, i'll make myself available Fantastic. Take care. Thanks for your time. Goodbye, everybody.